Hi there, me, your friendly neighborhood, friendly neighborhood humble stroke assaulter. So it's been about a week since I've done a video. Um, so this is going to be a comments and questions response video. Uh, it's been about a month and a bit, two months since I've done one of those. I just noticed as of 30 seconds ago, I'm at 123 subscribers. So I'm up a fair amount um, since the last time I honestly checked. And for all, the, all of you that have recently joined the Merry Little Band that we are, um, some of you may be stroke folk, some of you may not be stroke folk, some of you may be brain injured folk, some of you may not be brain injured folk. Thank you for joining. For those of you who have taken the time to join or simply watch my content, thank you for letting me share a little bit of your day and you share a little bit of mine. So we're just going to go through um, some comments. Uh, and the first one is from Ashley Stubbings. Hey, Ashley, how's it going? You are a stroke folk. You said, uh, in response to the video I did, just a quick update, um, you're glad that I'm okay, and you apologize for not being in touch lately. Hey, you know what? Life gets in the way. Uh, I understand you've recently been in hospital. Hopefully nothing too serious, too complex, but I do hope you're on the mend. Uh, revolutionary Truth. You've recently become my spell checker, other than my girlfriend. There was a spelling mistake on a title. I have updated that. So that has been fixed. That was on the... Um, Radical acceptance video. Victor Warrior. Yeah, hey, I saw your comment earlier today. I'm doing well. Bit of a rough patch. Thank you for checking in. Um, and you've left some comments on other videos. Thank you for all the comments you've left. Um, thank you for being encouraging about the content I have been generating. Now, Heather Jesmer. You left a comment a couple days ago on the statin drugs and depression video I did. And your husband had a stroke in October. I'm so sorry to hear that. I do know how difficult that is. Uh, you've shown him some of my videos. First, he wasn't happy to be watching them, to be honest. Not sure why that is. I'm going to guess because he got to join a club that no one wants to be in, the stroke club, the brain injury club. Um, and apparently your husband has come to realize that he likes my frank, direct style. And I call a spade a spade. I've always been that way. Um, I've, I've never been one to pussyfoot around an issue or try to put lipstick on a pig, so to speak. Um, and you know what? You're right. You and your husband have the right, the right mindset. The disaster you had in your world was the actual stroke. The actual stroke was the disaster. Picking the pieces up afterwards should... Some days it's going to look like a disaster, but it should... Be more of a journey. It should realistically be more of a journey. And I'd like to just say if there's anything I can do, if there's something you'd like me to make a video about, please leave a comment down below. You can reach me directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com or you can reach me on Twitter and the Twitter handle is in the description down below. <laughs> you know, um, and you know what? I enjoy sharing my experience. Um, and I find by those of us that have had a stroke or have a brain injury, um, for those of us that have the ability to share our journey, to share our experiences, we can help create a better, better sense of understanding um, and help people around us accommodate us better so they know how best to interact with us, how best to deal with us. And again, I'm sorry that your husband had a stroke. I'll be doing a video probably tomorrow on relationships and stroke. Right? Then comes Angie Dell 66. You left a comment about a week ago. Um, you are in the US. You left a comment on the just a quick update video. You found the channel. You're not in Canada. You're in the States. And you recently found out your father had two strokes that you didn't even know about. And now he has mild dementia. And um, it took some poking and prodding to get your doctor to listen to your concerns. I did a video on vascular cognitive impairment and dementia. I'll leave a description in the link down below, or sorry, I'll leave a link in the description down below for that video if you haven't already seen it. I'm sorry to hear it took some, some work to convince the doctors of the help you genuinely needed. I know what that is like when your doctor isn't being the best advocate for you. That's a terrible position to have to be in, to have to basically force your doctor 
into a position that they need to be in, but they don't understand it. I'm, I'm kind of going through a little bit of that myself right now. Then Kundalini Rising, you left a me <laughs> about a week ago, you left a comment on my video about sex after stroke. Yes, I did a video about sex after stroke. Um, you had a stroke in your left cerebellum. Um, you're always fairly, fairly active and in good shape before your stroke. And then you give me more information about your personal life than I really need. Thank you. I'm not going to read the entire comment uh, simply because I don't think it'd be appropriate. However, if you're having the difficulties that you are, I'm going to suggest you go and see doctors. What doctors that is, I don't know. Um, I'm going to suggest you're going to start out with a cardiologist. Um, I'm going to suggest you go see a thoracic surgeon. Um, basically, go to your clinical team and talk to them about your concerns and your issues, your needs, and help them generate a plan. I'm just going to leave that there. For those of you that want to know exactly what he said, please go to the Sex After Stroke video. I will leave a link in the description down below and you can read the entire comment there. Now, I have a lot of international content that because of this video. So the next comment I have is from Argentina, from Maximiliano Bonzon. I hope I said that correctly. And if I murdered your name, I apologize. I'm a white guy from Canada. Um, you left a comment about a week ago on the self-harm and suicide after stroke. Uh, you are 48 years old. You had a stroke about a year ago. Still can't move your hand to open it, but you can close it, though. It's one of your major issues. Um, you've considered, I'm going to say a word that YouTube hates, suicide many times because um, you have difficulty tying up shoes. Now, you've seen me move my hands, right? I'm, I'm going to be doing a video shortly about your stroke versus my stroke. You can't compare one person's experience to another. I don't know what the healthcare situation is like in Argentina. I don't know what type of treatment you received in Argentina. I don't know a lot of things. So I, I can't speak specifically to your situation about what happened in Argentina. But what I can say is this. I didn't have a lot of difficulty moving my hands after my stroke. I had some right hand weakness. Um, and I worked on that. I did exercises through physiotherapy and occupational therapy, both formal with therapists and on my own. Um, I've, I've done a lot of exercises uh, to, to make things work. One of the simple things, I would put change, um, like quarters and, and dimes and pennies, various pieces of, 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 of money that were, that were coin on my kitchen table. And then I would simply practice picking them, picking them up. That helped a lot with dexterity. Um, I would do things like hold a knife and then chop food. So like celery and, and cucumber. And you'd end up making a salad by the end of it. Provided you don't end up looking, you know, with missing fingers. Um, so yes, my difficulties were my, my feet, my right foot specifically. Um, I still have foot drop. I still have a problem with the stepping out with the full gait uh, at times. So I have, I do have some difficulty with my feet, not so, so much my hands. Um, but th that being said, you should never compare your stroke to my stroke, my stroke to someone else's stroke. And I'm going to do a video about comparing stroke versus stroke because it's, it's not something anyone should be doing when it comes to brain injury. And, and I'll do the video about that. Um, and you can watch the video and, and find out why. All I have to say, Maximiliano, if you are seriously in a position where you're thinking about making decisions that are revocable, thinking about making a decision that can't be taken back, immediately, I'm going to stress this to anyone watching any video I ever make, to anyone watching this video now, to anyone watching a video I have made, if any subject I cover causes you concern. Um, if you are considering and you're having serious thoughts about an activity that would be self-harm, self-injury, or possibly end your own life, you immediately need to reach out and find the help 
that will help you the best. Picking up your phone and dial 999, picking up your phone and dial 911, picking up your phone and calling your local suicide prevention line, picking up your phone and calling a member of, of the clergy of you know, whatever religion you happen to belong to, picking up the phone and calling a family member, calling a best friend, you know, taking yourself to your nearest hospital and going to the emergency room and tell them honestly what your difficulties are and, and let them get you the help you need. So please, I hope this video finds you in good health. I hope this video, um, I hope to hear a response from you um, so I know that you're well. Now, I did a video on vaccines causes stroke. Yeah, vaccines cause stroke. Um, no, I don't think that. If you want to see my take on that, you can watch the video. Caleb, three weeks ago, him and I got in a little bit of, a little bit of comment war, um, not realizing he and I were both being sarcastic at the same time. Caleb, thank you. I'm like, is this guy really an empty? Does he honestly think that I'm... So, he and I were being sarcastic at the same time. Caleb, thank you. That was a very good little bit of discourse. Um, sometimes after my stroke, I miss subtext. And unfortunately, text doesn't let you pick that up all that well, right? Then we have uh, Caleb Musa. You're one of the old one of the old folk around here. You've been here with the channel for a while. You left a comment on my um, new first birthday video. Thank you very much. Yes, it was a very good birthday. Um, that My new first birthday, the actual 21st of June, was not only my new first birthday, but my girlfriend's graduation day and her master's in um, counseling psychology. So I got to get her into a nice little dress. I got into a suit. We had a really good evening, went out for dinner, and, and had some really good food and a, and a very memorable day. Uh, then me, you, haven't had a comment from you in a while. You left a comment on the Invisible Deficits, Disabilities, and Discrimination video um, where you said I'm a million percent correct. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately, when it comes to people that have not immediately observable deficits, not immediately observable disabilities, people tend to think there's nothing wrong with you. People might tend to think you're faking, and unfortunately, that is a thing. Um, one of the biggest things I have going for me after my stroke is I'm very high functioning. One of the biggest things I have working against me after my stroke, I'm very high functioning. So sometimes it works out in my favor, sometimes it doesn't. And unfortunately for those of us, and it doesn't matter if it's a stroke or not, um, for someone who has something as simple as celiac disease, a, a major foodborne allergy where you were allergic to gluten products or products that have been contaminated with gluten. Um, people may not understand what celiac disease is. People may not understand how celiac disease may present itself and they may not understand the ramifications of celiac disease, right? Then we have Jenny O'Connor. She left a comment on my video about balance and dizziness after stroke. Um, and her comment was, Dr. Google saved my life. My, neuro my neurosurgeon ignored me and almost killed me. Let me just say this. For my videos, I use a lot of Google for research. Um, I'm not a big fan of Dr. Google. Okay? Because unfortunately, no one has more psychiatric and psychological problems than a first year psychology student in university because they're reading all the books. Um, now, what I would suggest is if you honestly believe you have a concern, do the research you need so that you can then go to an, your actual doctors and go, this is my concern and here's why I have that concern, right? Um, and then let them make the decisions from there. Please do not use Dr. Google to try to try, to, the, 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 to try and diagnose yourself. So, however, I'm glad to hear you were able to get some information from the sounds of it that you were able to present to your neurosurgeon and you got an outcome that was favorable. Didn't sound like it was successful in some cases. Now, Ann Johnson. Ann Johnson, <clears throat> you're in Scotland and I've had conversations with you on Twitter. Um, you have had a concussion and you have a brain injury because of it. And your comment was, thank you for educating people about strokes. There's so much... Uh, invisible disabilities with brain injury that people just don't see. I think it's horrible that someone would accuse you of not having had a real stroke. She left a comment 
um, on the video I did about so you didn't have a real stroke. Um, that's not something I've personally encountered. Um, no one's actually said to me you didn't have a real stroke, but that video was um, conceived because of comments on Facebook and some of the Facebook groups I belong to. Um, you know, and unfortunately when it comes to deal with brain injury, when it deals with stroke, um, you know, if you've been in an actual accident where you've incurred a brain injury, um, or you've been involved in a traumatic life event where you've incurred a brain injury, um, that's not to say a stroke isn't a traumatic event, right? But you've been in some kind of like, for the guys and ladies in the mill, you were in a IED attack, um, or some form of tick, like you were in contact and something went sideways and you end up with a brain injury. Um, you're in a car accident, you know, you you get hit on the head by a forklift at work, whatever the case may be. Um, for those of you that had a traumatic brain injury or an acquired brain injury, like Ann, you had a concussion, or myself from a stroke, right? For people that have had accidents, it's easier for people to understand, oh, you had an accident. For people that have had a stroke, for those of us that end up fairly high functioning, there are a select horrible people population that sometimes might think that you didn't have a real stroke, right? And then there's Penelope Rose 7577. You left a comment on my video, not such a good day. You're from New Zealand. So I've got Argentina, I've got Scotland, uh, now I've got New Zealand. I've also got the States today. Um, she had a severe stroke back in January of 2018. And if you can hear that, that's Crash the Wonderbird talking to himself. I'll be right back. Hey there, we're back. And Crash has decided not to join us. So, Penelope Rose, you had a severe stroke in January of 2018. You watched two of my videos. The first one was on suicide. You simply stumbled across my channel. Again, um, you're feeling really depressed. Having a stroke is like a massive shit sandwich. And I, I agree with you. It is a massive shit sandwich. In your case, maybe with an extra helping of Vegemite. Again, um, just like Maximiliano, please, if you're in a position where you're thinking of making an irrevocable decision, don't. Follow my advice I left for him. Pick up your phone, dial 911-999, whatever it is in New Zealand, because I honestly don't know. I don't live there. I'm in Canada. Um... Call a clergy member, call a family friend, call a family member, present yourself to your nearest accident and emergency and, 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 and get the help you need there, right? And you find my voice rather common, and thank you. Maybe I'll do a read a phone book and you can listen to my voice, it'll help you fall asleep. So those are the comments that have been left recently. For Penelope Rose and Maximiliano, I do hope this video finds you well. I honestly hope that if you're having a rough patch, you seek out the help you need, you find the help that you need to get, whatever that might happen to be. Um, you know, for those of you that have recently stumbled across the channel, for those of you that have been enjoying my channel, for those of you that subscribe to the channel, thank you for taking some time out of your day to let me share some of my day with you. Um, if there's something you want to see me do a video about, be that you know, mental health related, be that stroke related, be that brain injury related, um, as long as it's germane to sort of the topics I cover, I'll happily do a video about it. So if there's something you'd like to see me do a video about, please leave a comment down below, um, or you can email me directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com, or you can find me on the Twitters. My Twitter handle is in the description down below. Um, just leave a comment. I'll do a video about it. Um, and if you happen to know someone that is either going through the recovery of a stroke or a brain injury, or you know someone that's supporting someone going through the recovery of a stroke or a brain injury, please point the channel up to them. They may enjoy and get some value out of the, con the content that I generate. Again, like Heather had indicated, I call a spade a spade. I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I'm not going to try to put lipstick on a pig. Um, I've never been a fan of the big hug theory. Um, for those of you that don't know, I used to work in mental health. Uh, 
before I worked in mental health, I was also in the Canadian Armed Forces. So I, when I when I went to work in mental health, I worked with young offenders. I worked in a program that was specifically designed for sexually offending youth and psychiatrically disturbed youth. And the style I worked when I worked with the young offenders was a provocative reality therapist. I was never into sugarcoating things. I was like, here's the situation. There's the problem. How do we resolve it? Right? Is there a resolution? Sometimes the resolution you might not like the sound of, but I'm going to give you the most realistic information so we can create the most realistic plan. So you're right. I, I call a spade a spade. <clears throat> I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I've never been a fan of the big hug theory. So you're right. I'm direct. Fortunately, since the stroke, I'm a bit more direct than I can, have normally been. Um, I have less of a filter at times. Maybe one day that'll get better. Maybe not. Don't really care. At least not right now. So if you want to see me generate some content, if there's an issue that you'd like to see me cover, if there's something that you feel you would like me to help you educate your friends and family about because they don't apparently want to listen to you, please give me the suggestions and I'll generate content about it. Provided it's something that content can be generated because of um, and the research supports it. Uh, just keep in mind, I can't guarantee the outcome of any one video because it's going to be re research based. It's going to be based on evidence. Um, and point the channel of people that might get the benefit out of it because the 123 of you happen to have subscribed to my channel and a bunch of you do watch my content and do leave comments. And if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke, that being someone who, someone who appears to be immediately befuddled, confused, or has a lack of balance, someone who has vision problems, they can't see to one eye, they see in grayscale, they can't move their eyes in a certain direction, they only see the little dot in the world, uh, someone has a facial droop, they have a noticeable visual slackening of the facial muscles, someone who can't raise both arms equally effectively or at all, someone who can't smile equally effectively or at all, someone who can't, someone who has slurred, stuttering speech or inappropriate word usage for situation or context, someone has general body weakness, weakness on one side, or has the inability to stand unaided. Please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.